Coming up tonight on the News at 5, the Great Falls community mourns the sudden death of a 14-year-old boy. Plus, Great Falls teachers prepare to go remote. How they feel about the change. From Montana's news leader, this is MTN News at 5. Good afternoon and welcome to the News at 5. I'm Jessica Nelson. Thank you for joining us. Tonight, the Great Falls community mourns the loss of a 14 year old boy. Antonio Carlos Theory Jr. was just an eighth grader at East Middle School in Great Falls. He died last night in what police are calling a suspicious death. MTN Zach Shermley has more. We are actually here on scene last night. We saw some fire trucks as well as a police department vehicle behind me. And it looked like there were some emergency responders that were sort of crouched over a body or something like that. We, of course, looked into it overnight and the Great Falls Police Department released a press statement today saying that they responded to reports of a shooting yesterday at around 5 p.m. and upon arrival found the deceased body of a 14 year old boy. We've confirmed that was an eighth grader at East Middle School. Now later today, Cascade County Sheriff Jesse Slaughter released more information. This one's a tough one. Police are ruling the death suspicious and this morning Theory's body was transported to Missoula for an autopsy. The incident happened near Beaverhead Court last night. At about 5 p.m., first responders were dispatched to the scene where they found the deceased body of 14-year-old Theory. GFPD is leading the investigation into what happened, and charges are being worked out by the Cascade County Sheriff's Office and the Cascade County Attorney's Office. Where we go from here is our, off our detectives and our officers, the patrol side, they will complete everything on their behalf um, as far as the investigation goes, and that can take days to weeks. The incident comes after East Middle School closed a day earlier than the rest of the school district due to a high percentage of students and staff quarantined from the coronavirus. Despite the school closure, a crisis team has been set up. That team will offer in-person and virtual grief counseling throughout the upcoming weeks. You know, firearms are one of those things that Montana has a lot of, and we just always ask that people remember firearm safety. We ask that people teach their children firearm safety. And a Great Falls Public Schools teacher I was texting with earlier today said of the situation, it is, quote, horrible, just horrible. In Great Falls, I'm Zach Shermley, MTN News. All right, switching gears now to our forecast. Andy Curtis is filling in tonight. I hope Curtis left you with good news for us, right? Does he do that for you or does he kind of uh, lay it me, on? He, leave, he left me with something. <laughs> uh, take a look for yourself. This could be good news if you're into wind and snowy conditions. I mean, this could be right up your alley if that's the case. High wind watch for most of our viewing area. That's going to last until tomorrow, Saturday at around 6 o'clock at night. Shouldn't be very snowy though over here. We're going to leave that to the folks west of the divide. Missoula, Kalispell, even probably down into Butte a little bit. Winter weather advisory, a good amount of snow falling over there at the moment, and that's going to last for the rest of tonight and into tomorrow. Lucky for us, that divide is acting as a fence and keeping all that to the west. And there still will be a few snow showers that might creep over with all that wind that's blowing uh, every which way this weekend, but it really won't amount to much, maybe an inch at most uh, down in the valley if we get that. A, a dusting, I think Curtis was saying, and that sounds pretty accurate. So W-I-N-D-Y, it's windy today and it will be windy tomorrow and even a little bit into Sunday, but we will have a temperature warm up ahead of us. I'll tell you when coming up. The state reported more than 1200 additional COVID-19 cases today, bringing the statewide total to over 45,000 since the start of the pandemic. There are now nearly 16,000 active cases in Montana. 499 people are hospitalized with the virus. Five more deaths have been reported since last night, meaning 510 Montanans have died from COVID-19 complications. As a reminder, MTN numbers can vary from the state since we also track data reported from local health departments. These numbers are also higher because some counties like Lewis and Clark County are reporting two days worth of new COVID-19 cases. Great Falls Public Schools is officially in remote learning for the next two weeks. With more on how some of the district's teachers are reacting to the transition, here's MTN's Matt Hosoffel. Great Falls Public Schools is going remote starting Monday, November 16th. This is the first time that GFPS has opted for a district-wide shutdown to slow the spread of COVID-19. The district had previously opted for a school-by-school -school approach, something they made clear was their plan back in August when the school year began. 
Now we all found out about the news of the shutdown on Tuesday, and while teachers across the district found out about the same time as everybody else, there was a feeling that this was coming. Kind of anticipated. My first reactions were kind of like, good, I'm glad that we're going to do something to try to help the community stop the, stop the community spread. After hearing that the district planned to transition to all remote learning, many teachers weren't surprised. We started doing remote learning in the classroom, so that was the nice thing. We started doing the Chromebook training and, and doing Seesaw and stuff like that. Their next thoughts? What do we have to do to be ready? Biggest thing or, you know, hardest maybe hurdle to, to cross at this juncture is to ensure that those students that don't have access to technology will have their curriculum when they walk out the door tomorrow at Friday at 3.20. Prior experience with remote learning gives some teachers an advantage. We've just been using Google Classroom in our program for probably three years now. In August, many teachers told MTN they were looking forward to going back for the same reason they're now disappointed. It's frustrating because the best part of teaching is interacting with students. I love discussion, I love weird questions, you know, and being able to talk with students about that, and, and that's what we're gonna miss. Despite the disappointment, the teachers say they feel ready for remote. Very fortunate we did have the 50 some days of um, building that relationship, not only with the students, but with the parents. Less than a week isn't much time to prepare for this transition, but the district has been telling their teachers all semester to keep curriculums and materials ready should the transition to remote learning become necessary. Now, the plan is to return to in-person learning on November 30th, but some teachers have told me they'll err on the side of caution just in case this remote learning period lasts longer than two weeks. In Great Falls, Matt Holzaffel, MTN News. On Monday, Montana's Attorney General Tim Fox is expected to announce Big Tobacco has reached a settlement regarding $43 million in funds owed to Montana. MTN's John Riley has more information about the history of the litigation. Over two decades ago, Montana joined every other state and territory in the country to sue the largest tobacco companies for decades of deception about health hazards of smoking. Montana entered into their own settlement agreement with the companies in 1998. In exchange for dropping the lawsuit, the companies promised annual payments to the state and to restrict marketing practices. The payments from the tobacco companies fund the Children's Health Insurance Program, Medicaid, smoking prevention, cessation programs, suicide programs, and more. In 2003, the tobacco companies began disputing payments of state settlements and withholding owed funds to Montana, arguing disputes have to be settled with all states before making that year's payment. The Attorney General's office prevailed in a lawsuit for the 2004 mispayment of $3.3 million in 2018. And in April of this year, Fox announced the state would take the tobacco companies to court over the $43 million that is owed to Montana under the original settlement from payments withheld dating back to 2005. Tobacco has been costly for the Treasure State. According to the CDC, around $440 million has been spent on tobacco-related health care costs. And around 1,600 Montanans die every year from tobacco-related illnesses. Reporting in Helena, John Riley, MTN News. Every November, people affected by suicide loss gather in their local communities to find comfort and gain understanding with International Survivors of Suicide Loss Day. This year, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention event will be virtual, allowing survivors throughout Montana an opportunity to come together virtually to share their stories. The statewide event runs from 10 a.m. to noon on Saturday, November 21st. In the virtual event, participants will hear a lecture from a keynote speaker, watch a documentary, and participate in breakout rooms. One committee member explains how a virtual conference will make participants comfortable. I lost my son to suicide. I know how difficult it is to put yourself out there. In all honesty, doing it through Zoom is probably the easiest way to do it because you can connect and still have some of your creature comforts of home around you. The event will also include a slideshow remembering any loved ones. A link to register is on our website. If you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide, there is help. Please call 1-800-273-8255 or you can text HOME to 741741.
All right, when we come back, Andy Curtis will have a complete check of your forecast. And later, Trump will be in office until late January. What can he still do as president? Our Joe St. George takes a look. Welcome back, everybody. Andy Curtis filling in for Curtis Grevenance today to take us into the weekend. And also coming with us into the weekend is a whole lot of wind statewide. If you haven't experienced it for yourself, well, here it is in map form behind me. Future Tracker, state-of-the-art technology tracking wind in the future, showing us that we're going to be seeing a lot of strong wind gusts pretty consistently across the state tonight and into tomorrow. Now purple means we're pushing 60 miles per hour and that's a whole lot of purple on the map all the way into Saturday morning. Saturday turns uh, morning turns into afternoon. Purple starts to disappear, but there's still a lot of orange and yellow. That means 25, 30 mile per hour consistent breezes throughout the state. Gusts could be even higher at times. Now Sunday start to die down, start, starts to uh, calm down a little bit. Sunday looks at the moment to be the nicest of our weekend days with that wind dying down at least in the morning. Sun coming out, temperatures looking all right, but Sunday afternoon that wind is back up and that's going to take us right into the evening. So brace yourself for conditions a lot like today and maybe even a little windier depending on where you're going tomorrow. Up in Great Falls, 39 degrees at the moment because with that wind comes some warmer temperatures, but it doesn't feel like it. Taking a look at the wind, 44 mile per hour gusts, 35 mile per hour consistent wind speeds. That's knocking down that temperature to 26. So a lot cooler than what it's reading out on the thermometer up around the Electric City. Down in Helena, not too bad at the moment. It was a little windier earlier, but right now we're really lucky to see only five, six mile per hour breezes going through the capital city. 43 is our temperature, so pretty good uh, temperature to end the day on. Feels like 40, so not too bad at all. Temperatures across the state, 40s and high 30s, but depending again where you are, especially if you're up around Haver or Cup Bank, for example, it's going to feel a little bit colder than 34 or 41 degrees. So really enjoy if you're inside at the moment, which I'm assuming you are because you're watching TV. Now here's the wind speed, 35 in Great Falls. So definitely one of the higher points, if not the highest point on the map. Of course, we don't really count Livingston. 49 degrees is just kind of par for the course down there. 15 mile per hour winds up in Cup Bank and 17 in Haver. So of course, knocking down that wind speeds. And uh, the wind is actually kicking up a little bit out to the west. Missoula, 17 miles per hour. Kalispell, 13 miles per hour. And they get the little added bonus of dealing with some snow to go along with that wind. Now, lucky for the rest of us, all that snow and all this nasty stuff out to the west, uh, looks like it's not going to get much farther than the Continental Divide. So even if we do see a few scattered snow showers tonight and into tomorrow in Helena and Great Falls, shouldn't be much more than that. Looks like most of that snow is going to stay to the west. Kalispell and Missoula, uh, for example, should be getting the brunt of it. So tonight into tomorrow, snow and wind and out there um, to the west, going to be whipping around. Brings a little bit across the Continental Divide, like I had mentioned, but for the most part, wind is what we're going to be dealing with Saturday and Sunday. And with that wind will be some warmer temperatures, but just like we were showing you a couple seconds ago, it won't exactly feel like that. Seven day forecast though does show us some warmer temperatures on the horizon with maybe not as much wind up in Great Falls. Like I was just mentioning 35 for tomorrow, 41 on Sunday. Now Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday looks like we're going to calm down a bit and temperatures will rise up into the 50s. Then in the Helena area, similar situation, 52 for the expected high on Tuesday and a lot calmer than today. While the presidential transition continues, one thing remains certain. President Trump will remain in office until January 20th. So what could the president still do between now and then? Our Joe St. George explains. We are officially in what's known as lame duck status here in Washington, D.C., the period after the election, but before the inauguration. But President Trump still has plenty of power. Here are five big things President Trump can do between now and the end of his presidency. Number one, he can issue pardons. Number two, he can continue to appoint officials. He can remove and fire top government officials as well. He can order military action and he can still issue executive orders. Now, in regards to pardons, President Trump could very well pardon advisors like Michael Flynn or Paul Manafort. He could also try to preemptively pardon members of his own family as ongoing investigations investigations are still being conducted in places like New York. President Trump can also appoint individuals to top posts that President-elect Joe Biden won't be able to undo. 
For instance, it appears President Trump will get his pick for a top job at the Federal Reserve. Judy Sheldon, a former informal advisor to the Trump campaign, is expected to be confirmed by the Senate before Trump leaves office. This post has the power to influence your interest rates on your savings account or mortgage for years to come. And then there is the power President Trump has in firing people. He has already fired Secretary of Defense Mark Esper since the election. He could fire the FBI director next. As for executive orders, President Trump still has the power and he may use it to direct COVID funds to certain areas. But as soon as he takes office, President-elect Joe Biden would also have the power to issue executive orders and he could make any President Trump executive order null and void. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Stolen packages from porches cost Americans more than $5 billion a year. Yahoo Money reports more than 35 million Americans claimed to be a victim of package theft this year. 2020 likely gave porch pirates more opportunities as online orders surged due to the pandemic. Holiday online shopping is expected to increase by 11%, but not all victims are innocent. Yahoo Money reports more than 3% of people claiming to be victims admitted stealing packages as well. Coming up next on the News at 5, we sit down with Miss Montana USA. Stay with us. Tana's News Leader. You're watching MTN News at 5. Welcome back with us. Thanks for staying with us. MTN's Phoenix O'Connor sits down with Miss Montana USA to get her take on the pageant and what's next. Montana! There's just something about the Miss USA stage. It's the most elite, most prestigious pageant stage anywhere. But what was it like going to Miss USA during a pandemic? It was stressful. In the beginning, um, before we left, we had to take an at-home COVID test and they told us, you know, if you do test positive, you can't come and mm. you're done essentially. <laughs> and so, and I get that logically, you know, that's science. Um, but we were, a lot of us were really afraid of that. Jamie Forth Seth is this year's Miss Montana. She watched from the crowd as Underwood took the stage she also adds that the pandemic changed the experience as well. They checked all of our temperature as we were walking in and they separated the chairs according to like the groups that you signed up. So if you came with your family, you could all be in a group. Miss Idaho and I went together. When it came to the crowning, both title holders sat at the edge of their seats as Miss Idaho won first runner up. The title of Miss USA went to Asia branch of Mississippi. She exuded everything that Miss USA should be her answer, her walk, everything. She was so confident, so intelligent, and obviously gorgeous. And another cool part of that was Miss Idaho USA, which is bordering on Montana, was first runner up Miss USA. So Miss, the new Miss Idaho USA and I were sitting together and we were losing our minds. It was so cool to watch someone that we're close with get first runner up and be on the last two standing. For Underwood, her platform was to increase awareness of environmentalism, climate change, and being more eco-conscious. Anything that you would like to say to Montanans one last time? The image of a pageant girl is, in my eyes, somebody who wants to make an actual change in their community. And so a lot of women are really afraid to come out and stand by something that they're really passionate about that might be controversial. And while I didn't win and I didn't place, I still look at the entire year as a win as a whole. Because for me, if I had been any quieter, I wouldn't have the same results that I have now where I have people messaging me saying, my whole family is vegan. We're gonna have a vegan Thanksgiving. Or when we watched Miss USA, we had a vegan dinner in honor of you. For MTN News, I'm Phoenix O'Connor. Okay, up next, if you are a fan of Mountain Dew, you will love their latest announcement. I'll explain after the break. When we welcome our West Coast viewers, the U.S. government itself rejecting the president's claims of fraud in the election as he reappears in public today, what our fact-checking finds. Also, the latest on mask wearing, how they work, and which ones are best when we see you back here tonight. From Montana's News Leader, you're watching MTN News at 5. All right, Mountain Dew fans will soon have more to choose from, but will need to make it themselves. Mountain Dew plans to launch its first ever cookbook. The announcement coincides with the drink's 80th birthday. The cookbook will feature about 40 recipes that range from Mountain Dew salsas and barbecue sauces to Mountain Dew brisket and turkey. The book goes on sale next week, and I already know our director, Bill, will be buying that book first. 
first one to do that. Yeah, he'll be first in line for that. Me, myself, I, I'm more of a Surge fan, always have been. So let me know when that cookbook comes out. I'll be running, running to the store to get it. Won't be going anywhere this weekend, though, because of that wind. Temperatures aren't going to be too bad, but we're going to be dealing with a lot of wind across the state. That's going to last until Saturday, but carry over into Sunday a little bit, at least in the Helena area up in Great Falls. Windy as well. Temperatures not looking too bad, and we're actually going to hit 50 as we head into the work week. So a warm up is on the way. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great rest of your Friday and a wonderful weekend.